and 10 Ultimate Aliens first season has some of the best storytelling progression I've ever seen in an animated show. It perfectly sets up the main villain and the several characters around him, and fleshes each one out in a linear and straightforward fashion. The arc that takes us through the five Andromeda aliens and the four pieces of the map of infinity culminates into the Forge of Creation. I personally regard this episode to be the best in Ultimate Alien, and while it may not be the funniest or most action-packed episode, the sheer hype and lore packed into 22 minutes is astonishing. But enough talk, let's jump into the Forge of Creation and dissect just what makes this episode so unique. If you're new, just hit that subscribe button. I promise if you're a Ben 10 fan, you won't be disappointed. Let's go. Sometimes I wonder why I... I mean, the intro is pretty good. I love seeing Asimov's four fingers and how Kevin says, Harsh when he yells at them. Ultimate Alien just had this really unique sense of humor I can't describe. Azimuth explains to them the exposition and tells them about the Forge of Creation. Kevin and Gwen each have keys to the Alien X transformation, allowing Ben to transform. Another reason this episode was talked about as extensively as it was, is just due to seeing Alien X again for the first time since Alien Force. I talk about this in my Alien X video. This episode was set up to give far more insight to the Celestial Sapien home and more to how these beings operate. It also gave us another cool Serena and Bellicus back and forth. One problem with the key thing though, they say it's for security, but what if Kevin turns evil again, which it literally does in the episode. What if one of them gets brainwashed? What if they just lose the key? I guess to build more hype, but it seems like these keys are more trouble than anything. After Serena and Bellicus prove too obstinate to make a decision, Paradox shows up somehow and poofs Ben back to human. Apparently there's a restraining order for Paradox to not show up near Celestial Sapiens. How this came to be is a mystery for another day, but hilarious nonetheless. I really want to make a video all about Paradox, let me know if you'd be interested in that, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Ben turns back and Paradox explains the current crisis. I love this, we got all the big players here, the crew, as Smith, Alien X, Paradox, and more to come. But it makes you wonder, what if Paradox just didn't exist? Would Serena and Bellicus just say no and the team would have never discovered the Forge? I guess without Paradox, the Forge wouldn't even be hidden. Eh, too deep. All we need to know is Agrigor bad, and no Agrigor touched by Alien X. That's enough for me. Paradox explains to them the concept of omnipotence, a term commonly thrown around in power scaling videos that ultimately boils down to unlimited, unstoppable forces beyond any control. Should Agrigor absorb a newborn celestial sapient, his omnipotence will prove fatal to all involved. I should say, past the omnipotent BS, the whole explaining the forge thing would seem super complicated to like a nine year old audience. Matter of fact, this whole episode uses pretty big words and complex jokes. A common error of the parochial mind. Remarkably, no. Did I really used to be that obnoxious? I'm actually oblivious. Not complaining, just observing. I don't even know how I watched this show as a nine-year-old. After a lot of sciencey crap, Paradox allows them through a hidden nebula and into a void of nothingness as they fly their ship towards the forge. A couple of agrobots cut open their ship and attack them, but Terraspin flings them all out into space. Now we clearly see some of these robots flying past the borders here where Ben later unlocks a special someone. But not one of these robots comes back with a younger version of themselves? I know they're not sentient, but how about like a newborn calculator just floats back, huh? Anyway, as they try to wedge the plane's wing out of the white void, Ben falls into the pit and comes back with a special someone. And your old Ben 10. Now this was epic growing up. I mean seriously epic. This was the first time these lame UAF writers ever tampered with crossovers, and while they do it a lot more with Generator Rex and especially in Omniverse, this was really the first time they did it since the beginning of Alien Force. It felt super cute to see Kid Ben 10 back here in all his glory, although not so much at the same time. Sure, Tara Strong reprises her role, and the design looks pretty good, but some other things just feel a bit off. I mean the character is totally flanderized initially. I get that they made it so there's a good dichotomy with older Ben, plus it later gives him character development, but come on, you can't tell me OG Ben acted this obnoxiously all the time. Plus, there's this thing where the sound effects and music over the OG Ben is completely different. I don't know if they left the rights or something to those assets, which by the way would be ridiculous, since Man of Action still owns the rights. But either way, a lot about this kid Ben is off. I wouldn't call this nostalgia baiting for the sake of nostalgia baiting, but it certainly feels a bit bootleg, not gonna lie. They don't change that much. I got my eye on you. I'm quaking in my boots, Pip Squeak. I love you, Ultimate Alien Kevin. Never change. They finally all team up and get back on the path, as we finally enter the forge. Seriously, though, these are some beautiful shots. The layering of the different clouds and shapes and colors just melt together so well. I often use these clips on video backgrounds or on end screens for a reason. They are among the most beautiful shots in Ultimate Alien. But why do some Alien Xs have toes? Your butt is huge. What did you say? Lame. Weak. Guess this one's okay. Where do baby Alien Xs come from? When two constellations love each other very much. Kevin? Just trying to help the kid out. 
I had to learn about astrophysics on the streets. <laughs> this kid been in all bad. There are some fantastic adultish jokes and otherwise in this episode that make it even better. Dwayne McDuffie was a seriously talented writer. I had expected this episode to be his only writing credit this season, but he also wrote Fame, Ultimate Egregore, Map of Infinity, and Absolute Power Part 2. I mean, it's incredible that basically all the best episodes of Ultimate Alien, at least in my opinion, this dude wrote. Amazing talent. Rest in peace. The team finally arrives at the baby alien X, and we see a super evil, no good, very bad Ultimate Egregore. By the way, this just came to me. Plus, I may have read it on the wiki. But I'm pretty sure Ultimate Egregore wanted to absorb a baby alien X instead of a fully grown one because his personality just wouldn't be developed yet. Genius! We get a pretty mid fight scene, I'm not gonna lie. There's so much wrong with it. The fact that Kevin is knocked out when we never even see him get punched. And the fact that Stinkfly shoots lasers instead of slime. And how Ultimate Swampfire screams. That sound is definitely going on my soundboard. Music to my ears. They even managed to throw in this stupid line. Just a copy of Wild Vine. Sure. Remember the time Wild Vine did this? <laughs> Yes, because that's probably the only power you and Wildvine have in common. Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Eventually, Kevin absorbs Ben's watch and turns evil, and absorbs Egregore's powers in like 10 seconds. I'm not kidding, the whole fight is barely 30 seconds. The entire ending feels extremely rushed, and I wish they could have at least had another 5 minutes to flush this out. Or maybe cut out all the BS in the intro we're on the ship, and dedicated to a decent fight scene that's been building up for... Oh, let's see. How many episodes? 15! Kevin has a rampage, Kid Ben has a moment of growth, and actually ends up being the one to convince Kevin to walk away from the fight. The episode ends with Paradox setting everything back to normal, like a great episode of Fairly Odd Parents. I wish everything Ultimately, yeah, ultimately, The Forge of Creation is a fantastic episode that includes pretty much every big player in the Ben 10 world, from Paradox to Alien X, from Aggregor to the two Bens. There's a lot going on in 22 minutes. I think the episode could have benefited from a few extra minutes of runtime, but as it is, it still holds up as a great episode and one of the best in the entire series. I still prefer Escape from Aggregor, Half of Infinity, and Perplexahedron, but that's just me. What do you think? Do you like this episode or hate it? And why? Tell me all your thoughts in the comments down below, and you might just get pinned. Be sure to like and subscribe and support me. Follow me on all the socials in the description below and check out all the other wonderful Ben 10 videos on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish in the next one. <laughs>